welcome to the semi couch. Um, it's we're still a couch, but welcome to the couch. Um, my name's Izzy, and today we have um, some special guests with us, which I'll introduce them in a minute. But um, this week we are going to do more of a student-led discussion. So in our recent youth survey results, um, a lot of you had asked for student-led discussions, and here we have here we here we are. We have a student-led discussion at our fingertips. So today we're doing an awesome crossover with um, a partnership with Be Great for Nate um, and two students who are on the substance use prevention team, um, Oliver and Gabby. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? I'm Oliver Tibbetts. Um, I'm a freshman in high school. Um, I'm Gabby, and I'm also a freshman in high school. Awesome. Thanks. So thanks for joining us today. Um, this is a great crossover. Um, and you guys are, um, I guess, a part of an organization uh, called Be Great for Nate. Do you guys want to um, expand on that? Talk to us a little bit about that before we get into our, our topics and announcements? Mm -hmm. Be Great for Nate started from the loss of Nathan Bruno in 2018 and it kind of started with his friends wanting to create something to stop suicide from happening. Yeah, um, <laughs> mostly youth suicide because that was Nathan's situation. So, um, you know, we like get taught like a lot of things to help us with that, for help us with suicide prevention. Um, we all have to go through a training uh, our first year, and I think we have to like revise it every year so that like it's fresh in our minds. We know what to do and all that. Yeah. So you guys are on the um, substance use prevention team. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? We focus more on like younger kids so they don't like fall into a bad path, mostly in like, high school. Yeah. We've been doing, we've been trying to organize a couple events to like, give them something to do on like a Friday night or something like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love it. Love the energy. And I'm sorry about uh, the community's loss. Um, but I think um, we need more um, programs like this um, that are teaching kids um, suicide prevention strategies and um, skills, especially if they find um, friends who are in a similar situation. And so we can um, really help bring um, youth and young adults to start living a healthier, more fulfilling life. So yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, we are so happy to uh, have you guys with us today on this awesome crossover and student-led discussion. And before we start getting into um, our free talk topic of the day, uh, one thing I do want to mention, mention is that um, on June 1st is when youth ambassador applications um, are open and you can start submitting applications or start to um, or start the process of applying to become a youth ambassador for the national program for 2021-2022. So yeah, so again, we're in an awesome crossover and we're gonna start the couch stuff rolling. So um, so today for our free top uh, today for our free talk topic discussion, we're going to be talking about um, mental health in the time of COVID. So that can mean a couple things. That could be um, how teen, how young adults and youth are starting off middle school or high school um, having to be virtual or how seniors are finishing their um, their year off a um, little bit different than most seniors and or um, college freshmen and college seniors as well. So let's jump right into it. Do you guys have any points that you want to start off with? Um, maybe it's something relatable to you or uh, an experience of that sorts. It's definitely harder during isolation because one, you have to like stay away from people um, for school, Zoom. It's much harder to learn and I bet it's much harder to teach for teachers. So it's just a difficult situation. And yeah, I, I know a lot of like my friends were struggling and I was struggling with online school for a while. So, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of the same way I felt. It was kind of weird going in to it, like completely online and not knowing everyone that's like in your Zoom call. I've never even seen them before. 
Yeah, no, I was kind of similar. So when I, so I'm in a little bit of a different situation. I started my first year of college. So while I did have in-person classes, half the class was online and half the class was in person. So I only knew half the class. Um, and some kids who were supposed to be in person never ever showed up. Um, so it definitely is a difficult situation at best. And there's like technical difficulties and, you know, they had to, I mean, it's created more jobs on campus for students. I mean, they've been able to be like technical assistants um, to teachers, but you know, there's classes I've had that one or two that they couldn't teach because of technical difficulties um, or they struggled getting kids to come in person. So I would definitely say at most that it's a little bit, I guess, challenging and it's very very um uh i mean how would you say this um troublesome to our um, our mental health at best i would say have you um have you guys felt like um maybe like your peers mental health has really been affected by the pandemic and virtual school and the beginning of it uh, I would say so, yeah. A lot of people, like, I haven't seen in, like, a year, and we just came back to full in person. Mm -hmm. So I'm, like, seeing them for the first time in, like, a year, year and a half, and it's, I don't know, it's just weird. Like, they've all changed because of COVID. Like, it's changed a lot of people in different ways, and, like, some are quieter, some are more, like, active, or, like, I don't know, just, I don't know. They, everyone's changed in a small way. So mm -hmm. it's, it's odd. Yeah, and it's noticeable. I mean, there's people on my um, Snapchat stories. I mean, obviously, like, again, I'm a little bit different situation because I'm not going with um, the same group of kids that I came from with middle school. They were all in very different places. And there's people who have really, I can just tell, change um, or have been struggling based off of, like, I can see on social media, um, you know, and that's the place that we go to because I mean, there's no one else around us if we're all in quarantine or we're all isolated or we haven't been able to see people um, or anything of that sorts. So yeah, I would say it's been a difficult year at most. I mean, how have your guys' um, like, I guess sports and like club activities have been impacted? Um. <laughs> I mean, I was, I did cheerleading in middle school and I was going to do it for high school, but then like just seeing how, like, I think they started off in the beginning and then they couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Like they pretty much didn't even have a season. So like, I don't really know what to do since like I couldn't start my first year. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's tough at best. Yeah, um, for my soccer team, we were supposed to have, like, around eight games, which is a pretty short season. But because of, like, COVID restrictions, um, it was cut down to four. Oh. So I missed a lot of, like, playing time. And I don't know. It's just the season got cut short. Practices were cut short. So it was just, like, a lot different. Yeah, no, I would say so for sure. Did – um. I don't know about you guys, but in my town, we had, um, I guess, I wouldn't really say like a protest. I mean, it's not really a protest, but more of less um, kids really advocating for sports because this the my schools were going to completely um, like cut them off and not do anything. Um, and, um, and this is the second time, and I think the last year, because um, before COVID, they were going to take away our sports and our um, clubs and activities due to like money restrictions. So, I mean, did you guys see like a lot of kids coming out if like the school was anticipating um, like to take away sports or to not like do them at all? Um, I think. A lot of kids were scared, like, the basketball season when it happened, mm -hmm. which I know a lot. Eventually it did, but that season also got cut short, and now it's definitely a difficult one. Mm -hmm. it's like, you're just using one ball, and you're, like, using your hands a lot. So, Yeah. And I know that for football, too. Yeah, yeah. I think almost every, like, um, I know our college sports were put in jeopardy a couple times because of, like, a fluxing uh, – cases and we couldn't do fall sports at all 
I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we couldn't we couldn't do any, and our clubs and um our got club meetings were on Zoom for the entire year, so we couldn't we really couldn't do too much. So I think I felt this back when I first started high school, and um, as someone who started. Um, doing substance use prevention back in eighth grade after my sister was hit by a drunk driver. Um, I went into high school and even though I moved, I saw a lot of my friends turn or start using substances. Um, and those who said that they were never going to do that ended up using some type of substance by the beginning of their sophomore year. Um, how has it been going into the, your first year of, um, high school in a very, very different time where substance use has increased um, and potentially watching your peers um, move towards using substances in any way, whether it's for coping, whether it's because they're bored, because of isolation or something of that sort. Um, I kind of find it like a little surprising and almost like weird at the same time because like I see kids who used to like pretty much like preach in middle school that they wouldn't ever touch anything or do anything and then like I see on like stories or something like that people that I never would have thought would do anything yeah no I've seen that too myself um all throughout high school and even in high um college still yeah I always see um like the most what I would think of like as like not in, I guess innocent like as in yeah. they wouldn't do like they would never think of doing something like that but like some people I've known for a long time like I've seen them you know like try things or something like that or like want yeah. to mm -hmm. so I've just been trying to surround myself with people that don't want to do that I guess yeah and I'm sure that's really hard and that's another thing um that takes a toll on young people's mental health is if they're choosing one path and their friends choose another and they're either outcasted or they have to resurround themselves with a new group of people um, compared to the old group of people that they have grown up with. I'm sure it's been, it's been difficult. Have you had friends, um, I guess maybe join or um, get involved in what the type of work that you're doing? How many people do we have in the, <laughs> We currently have eight, but I think we started with four. Yeah. Um. So substance use prevention team started with four people, and it was me, Gabby, Jay, and Calvin. And Calvin. Mm -hmm. So, but now it's gone to eight, right? So now it's we've expanded and had four more people join, which is good to hear. Oh, and that's great. Like, like we're slowly expanding, but. No, that's so awesome. That is awesome. Do you <laughs> has it been difficult since like being in college, sticking to what you do and not engaging in anything? Yeah, so um, I can definitely say that. I wouldn't say it's been hard, but it's definitely... Um, I never, I guess, really had the desire, but maybe it's because I started so young, to never really... Um, try or use substances and I and I was very blessed that I had a couple friends who when I moved to a new district um, and I started high school that I, I immediately made a couple new friends who never ever wanted to in their high school career and stuck to it um, and they were the same people who joined the sad group that, that I created but I have had I've gotten backlash I have gotten um, you know disapproval for it i've gotten um i've actually had in a little bit different sense i've actually had people steer away from not dating or talking to me romantically due to the work that i do you know people would shy away and they'd be like oh like i know she's like a goody two shoes so i would have that label labeled onto me often um that goody two shoes angle when i'm really just out here to try and improve the health and safety of our society um and I've had encounterments where kids are like trying to entice me and they're inviting me to a party. And I'm like, really? Like, no, thanks. I have other plans. And they're like, look, there's going to be weed. There's going to be alcohol. There's going to be all this awesome stuff there. And I was just like, no. And they ended up really, really hating me for it um, and really, really disapproved. And um, 
even going into college, I mean, I've had similar issues where kids are inviting me out and I'm like, oh, and they're like, yeah, we're going to go drink and we're going to go do all this other stuff. And I was just like, no, I mean, that's not really my vibe, but thanks for inviting me though. And you know, it's that same like, oh, like, sorry, I forgot you're a goody two shoes or, or, or sorry, I forgot you're waiting until you're 21. Um, so it has been a, a very, uh, not, I wouldn't say difficult, but I have gotten you know, backlash, disapproval, but I've also gotten at the same time, a lot of support from friends. I've had a very, very, um, supportive community alongside me. Um, and I've been able to make a career out of the community work that I started doing, um, due to my mom and her support and pushing us out into the community. So while there can be, I think there's negatives in almost any field that you go into. And especially as you go into college, there's neg- there's always going to be negative people in any career you go into. Um, and I can definitely say there's also tons of positives. Um, and I've really, through all of this, have looked through the positives. I've been able to fulfill my spiritual health, which is doing something that fulfills me. Um, I've been able to really live out um, my sister's... Um, I guess, uh, advocacy legacy, if you really want to call it something. Um, And I've also been able to make a career out of it and do something and work towards um, the international level of, um, you know, global health and wellness. So there's been there's been some obstacles that I've had to face, but there's also been a lot of positives that have come out of it. It's cool. Um, so yeah, that's, um, all we have today. Oliver and Gabby, do you want to say anything else? Add to this um, thank uh, you for yeah. having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. <laughs> Any reminders you want to give to the viewers? Because I like to give reminders. Oh. <laughs> well, be you. Stay safe. You rock. You're amazing. Pop off, Your Excellency. Um and take on the day practice self-love practice self-care and rock on um but again thanks for joining us today on the couch um for this awesome crossover we will be doing it again soon so if you loved it there's going to be more discussions like this um and we'll see you on the next episode bye okay cool